Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today is all about tote bags. Tote bags are such an awesome project for beginners and they're great to make for yourself, but they're also great to give as gifts and to sell. So there are so many tote bag tutorials on YouTube. Today I want to show you that you don't have to use anybody else's design or measurements or techniques. You can completely personalize it and design your own tote bag. Once you understand how a tote bag kind of goes together and some basic techniques, you'll be able to design your own with the fabric, pockets, and creative embellishments that you want that make it personal to you. Tote bags are a great way to use up fabric from your stash or use recycled materials such as old denim. This one I made out of a sweater that accidentally got thrown into the washing machine and became felted. This has been my computer bag for years. You can even put to use old t-shirts. So there's an old t-shirt that I had that became the lining for this one, as well as scraps of different leathers that I had. So today I'm gonna to show you first how to kind of plan, design your bag, cut out your pieces, plan the lining. If you want to use a lining, you don't necessarily have to use a lining. And then we'll get into loads of different options for different pockets, different creative embellishments, different ways of doing the straps, different ways of creating the flat bottom that's typical to most tote bags. So let's get into what you'll need. For most tote bags, you'd need about half a meter or a little over half of a yard of your main fabric. And you can combine different fabrics for the outer bag. So I might combine these two. Then you're going to want about half of a yard of something to line the bag with. And as I say that a lining is optional, but I do like it. And I'll give you a few reasons why I like to line the tote bag. You might want to have a zipper on your tote bag. That's completely up to you, but you do want some handles. Your handles or straps can be made out of the same fabric that you make your bag out of, or you can use something like a wide twill tape or a polypropylene webbing like that. If your fabric is very lightweight, like a quilting cotton, then you might want to also have interfacing and you'll interface the whole bag, but it might be better just to use a sturdier fabric to start with. You're also gonna need some marking tools like Taylor's wax or a water soluble marker, a ruler, good scissors, matching thread. You might also want a bit of a scrap of interfacing for the top of any pockets that you choose to do. And then any trim or buckles or clasps or anything that you might wanna use for a creative embellishment to really personalize your bag. Let's get into planning and cutting your bag. So first you wanna decide on the dimensions. How big do you want your bag to be? A typical tote bag is probably anywhere from about 16 to 18 inches wide and about 16 to 18 inches deep, including that flat bottom. But you can really make it however big you want it to be. The front of the bag can be divided into strips or panels as long as you're adding seam allowance to any extra seams that you're building in just so your dimensions end up being what you planned for. I recommend sketching out your bag and even making a note of the, the measurements, the dimensions that you want it to end up at. So once you know the size of the bag, you can either cut your fabric into two rectangles of those dimensions plus seam allowance. You can just do two separate rectangles. Depending on the fabric that you're using, you might want to do instead one long rectangle or one wide rectangle instead of two separate ones. And then the bottom can either be included in those measurements all as one fabric, or you can make the bottom in a separate fabric. And I'll show you an easy way to do that. So once you have your basic shape, you'll need to add seam allowance all the way around. And then using your wax or your water soluble marker, you can just draw that shape directly onto your fabric. Once your plan is clear, you can go ahead and cut out your pieces. For me, the fabric I'm going to use, I think this is an old table runner or something that's been cut in half. I've got two pieces, so I'll be doing the method of cutting two rectangles that are the same size. And then I've also got a scrap of this fake suede. And I think that's really pretty with it. With the suede, I'm just going to make the pocket and the bottom. And I've got a piece of quilting cotton that I'll use for the lining. And I'm going to be using this linen webbing that's an inch wide or 2.5 centimeters. And it's really lovely. That's what I'll do for the straps. So I played around with this and I think um, I'll be making these two panels out of the dotted fabric and then the pocket and the base out of the suede. So this is how it's going to look when it's flat. It's gonna be 18 inches wide, 32 inches long. So I, I like to draw it out on graph paper. You don't have to, but 
it's kind of handy. Each square equals an inch, so it does make it easy to work with. I'm going 18 by 32. I'm taking four inches out of the middle for that base. So that means I've got 32 minus the four, so that's 28 inches left. That means that each of these pieces will be 14 inches by 18 plus seam allowance. So that gives me an eight inch pocket by nine. And then the base is gonna be the 18 inches wide by four inches. I'll be adding seam allowance to each of those pieces. So instead of 18 by 14, I'll be cutting 19 by 15. The base, instead of 18 by four, I'll be adding an inch to each direction for seam allowance. So that equals 19 by five. When I cut my lining, I can just cut the lining 18 by 32 plus seam allowance, so 19 by 33. So good, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pieces. So let's talk about the lining for a second. So there are a few good reasons why you might want to line your bag. First of all, it does give that extra layer of substance and structure to the bag, especially if you're using a lighter weight fabric. If you've got the whole thing lined, then you don't necessarily need to interface it if, for a lighter weight fabric. A second reason why you might wanna line it is it gives you a good option, a good place to put extra pockets. Pockets on the inside of a tote bag are fantastic to have. And then finally, by lining it, that means you don't have to finish your seams inside. They don't have to be serged or zigzagged because they're never going to be seen. Quilting cotton works great for the lining, but I also do like to repurpose things like old t-shirts for the lining. You'll want the lining to be the exact same as the outer bag. If, you're, if your outer bag is made up of several different panels joined together, you can actually go ahead and sew those panels into a flat shape. You don't wanna get three dimensional yet, so don't sew up any side seams, but once you get that flat shape, then you can use that as a pattern piece to cut out your lining. If your shape is already just a flat piece, you can just go ahead and use the exact same dimensions to cut your lining. Okay, let's get into the pockets now. I'll show you a few different styles. A very common mistake is people make their pockets too small. So go ahead and draw it out, draw the size of the pocket that you want, and then you'll be adding your seam allowance all the way around. Most patch pockets need three centimeters or an inch and a quarter across the top, just for that more substantial top edge of the patch pocket. So when you're adding your seam allowance, add that extra bit to the top. In that three centimeter fold for the top of the pocket, that's where you might wanna put a little bit of interfacing, just so your pocket doesn't start to sag. So go ahead and decide on the number of pockets you want and their shape and dimensions and the style of pocket. I'll show you a few different styles. I'm gonna show you two different styles. They're interchangeable. I just wanted to show you two different styles. For both, I put a piece of interfacing across the top and then surged. I also turned up about a quarter inch or a little less than a centimeter on the bottom edge. I just pressed that up with the iron. So for this outer bag, the pocket is going to be kind of sandwiched under the webbing for the straps. Straps will come all the way down like that. So I kind of wanted to lighten the look of this a little bit. So I might play around with using some of the webbing as a decorative point here. So now the only sewing I have to do to prepare this one is sew right across that serging. I've sewn across just on top of that serge line. I think I'll sew down here to cover that line. And then I think I'll sew in the middle and then fold it down and sew a third time. I think that'll be good. Then I just ran an extra line of stitching across the top just, just for balance. The print on here is helping me to center this and also to make sure I've got it going straight. So if I didn't have this print, of course, I'd be measuring. And I think probably if those are the same three measurements, that's probably a good look. These sides are gonna get covered by the straps. So that's why they don't have to turn under. Just the bottom edge has to turn under. So now I'll sew down, across, and up. And when I'm on the bottom edge here, I wanna sew nice and close to that bottom edge. Good, there's the pocket on the outer bag. I think that looks really great. For the patch pocket, I'll just fold that surged edge down toward the right side and then sew at the 15 line or 5 8 line just those two little bits. And then stick both thumbs in and flip and poke out those corners nice and pointy. You can use a point turner or just use closed up scissors to poke that corner even nicer. You do want to get that corner nice and square. Then this goes to the iron, you press this flat. And then follow these same folds down, press both sides down flat, 
and the bottom edge up just the same amount. So I'm going to press those, but I won't sew until I get it onto the bag. The only thing I'll sew is right across the top edge here. Okay. So there's the pocket for the lining all prepared. I'm going to put that patch pocket on the lining, or maybe three, four inches from the top is going to be fine, just as long as it's centered and level. On the patch pocket, also close to the edge on three sides, so down one side, across the bottom, up the other side. So there's the lining pocket sewn on. So of course you can make your pockets any size, any style, but you'll be sewing the lining pockets to the lining while it's still flat and the outer pockets to the outer bag while it's still flat. For straps, you have several options. Your strap or handle can just be from the top edge to the top edge of your bag like that, or, or it can go right down the whole length of the bag, which really does make it nice and strong, but of course it means you need more of the webbing. But I do love this because you can tuck your pocket into there and it makes a really slick looking pocket. Your straps can be made out of the exact same fabric that you're making your bag out of. If you are making your straps out of fabric, I do not recommend sewing it right side together into a tube and turning that tube. On a heavier, crisp fabric like this, it's just never gonna look good. So instead, I'll show you a nicer way to sew a strap like that. Cut a piece that's the width of the strap that I want times two plus seam allowance. So if I want an inch wide strap, two inches, plus half an inch of seam allowance, so three inches for a one inch strap. I'm gonna take that to the iron, turn up that half inch seam allowance on both sides, and press in half. So with it neatly pressed, the seam allowance in, and then press in half, and then I'll just sew those two folded edges together, and I'll do a line of stitching on this side, just so that it looks balanced. So that method is always going to look better than this method. Whichever style of strap you decide to go with, you're going to want that strap to sit above the bag by at least 19 inches, All right? So if your strap is just going to sew into that top edge, then you'll want to add seam allowance. Oh, so that was going to equal 20 inches or what is that? 50 centimeters. My strap is going to come all the way down here and sew into this bottom seam here. So that means I need the 14 and 14 plus 19. Each of my straps is going to have to be 47 inches long. So if you want to conserve your materials, you would just cut two 20 inch pieces, but I'll be cutting two 47 inch pieces. I've got the back pin the same and I've marked two inches down. And so for all of these straps, I'm going to just sew right close to that edge across and then right back down these edges. The straps are all on, so nice and close around the whole thing. If your strap is not going to come all the way down and you want it just to come out of the seam at the top, so you're lining it and you want the strap to come out of that seam. So then what you do instead of this, let's just pretend that this one is not even here. So then you would just take your strap, make sure it's not twisted, and you're going to just sew it upside down and just give yourself a little back tack at the edges, probably about the same four or five inches in from the side, depending on your bag. So you'll be sewing it on upside down, and then once you flip out the bag after it's lined, it'll come up that way, and it'll be sewn neatly into that seam. Make sense? All right, but you do start with it upside down like that. If you're not lining the bag, then you can sew it to the outside. You can do this later, but I just want to mention it now that we're talking about straps. You would just sew it again, starting off upside down, maybe a little lower down. Maybe let's say an inch and a half down. You'll sew across again with it going upside down and not twisted. And then after it's sewn there, you'd fold it back on itself. You could sew an X or just a couple of lines to strengthen that. So that one is the only one that can be done afterwards. So let's add a creative embellishment. If you have an embroiderer machine, this is a great time to use it. And the pocket is a great place to add a creative embellishment. But I do recommend that you embroider on your fabric first and then cut your pocket out around it. It just makes it easier to have that embroidery land exactly where you want it. If you're giving it as a gift, embroidering on the person's name or initials is lovely too. Just remember that for your embroidery machine, it's gonna be a lot easier 
to embroider onto a flat piece before you turn anything into a three-dimensional shape. The strap is another place where you can add a creative embellishment. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you might have the, the type of sewing machine that has different embroidery stitches that kind of go in a scroll, like a continuous embroidered design. That's a lovely thing to play around with on your propylene webbing straps to just do an embroidery stitch right the whole way along the strap. Really looks good. A photo transfer like this can be a beautiful creative embellishment or fabric paints, applique. There's really no limit to how you can decorate your bag. The base of your bag can just be created by boxing the corners. You don't have to necessarily have a different fabric on the base the way I'm doing. It can all be one and you just and I'll show you how to box those corners. You can also play around with different fabrics and have a base that kind of comes up here. In which case you would just make this part bigger and the front and back smaller. That can be really attractive if you're using different fabrics. It gives kind of a, a visual weight to the bottom of the bag. Good. Or you can make your base like this where it is just sitting on the very bottom. Now there are ways that you can sew around a rectangle like this, but I'm gonna show you how to do that just through boxing your corners, and it's just the easiest way to have that effect. Whether you're doing kind of that flat base or the bigger, you're just sewing the rest of your panels together. Now to create this whole big flat shape of your bag. So I'll be taking my base piece and putting it right side together there and I'll sew here and then open this up and then go right side together with the back okay turned it I pressed the seam allowance going toward the base and then I top stitch the top stitch of course is always optional but it does make that seam stronger so now this whole big piece is exactly the measurements that I had planned all right we're getting there now you can wait until you get your whole bag together at this point and you can cut your lining now just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room if the bag ends up, you know, a little different than what you had planned. So you can double check to make sure that your lining is exactly the same as the bag. Good. So yeah, you can wait and cut your lining at this point. Okay, so now the bag goes in half, right side together. And I'll match up these points nicely and put a pin there. And because this is the critical part, I really want those to match nicely. I think I'll start sewing at the bottom and go up. Now I'm also going to take the lining and fold it right sides together too. There's the pocket, if you can see. So this is the right side of the lining. And I'll be sewing the side seams of this as well but I'm going to leave a gap on one side. The gap is about a third of the bag, so it's one third sewn, one third left open, one third sewn. So I'll just put a pin at the top and bottom of the gap. The side seams are sewn, and now to press those, I just wanna put the bag right over the end, the pointy end of my ironing board to be able to press these seams open and flat. All right, so now just before I take this off the ironing board, I want to just keep this corner exactly as it is here. To box the corners, I'm gonna be sewing right along that same line. And I'll take a measurement of this so that I do the same on the lining. So that is two inches or five centimeters from the point. I'll do the same on the lining one. And on this step, you wanna make sure that that seam is right in the middle of this triangle and that it's totally flat on the bottom and fully pulled out, opened out on the top. No extra little folds or bumps. So as I pull it off the ironing board, I keep the corners as they're pinned. I'll be sewing each of them straight across that point. Same thing on the lining, two inches or five centimeters from the point, put a little pin. So even where the gap is, I still press my seams open and flat and we need this gap to be able to turn the whole bag through. If you don't plan to line the bag, then yes, you would finish your edges and you would not leave a gap, but you would box the corners in the same way. I've boxed the corners now, so you can see what I mean about sewing straight across the triangles. The same on the main bag, 
sewing straight across okay. that point. That one looks you can trim this off, but honestly, I've never felt the need to. I just leave it. And then when you flip it out, it looks exactly like that other technique um, where you sew around the rectangle, but this way is so much easier. So there's my flat bottom. That looks beautiful. Now, of course, if you want this to stay crisp and flat, you can interface that whole piece. I'm not too worried about that. So now we're able to join the bag to the lining. You can see that when you're lining a bag, you basically make two bags and then put them together. So I've got the main bag right side out and I'm leaving the lining inside out. And I'm gonna just take that main bag and shove it inside the lining which seems completely backwards at this point, but this is how I can get the two bags to be right side together. So I'm gonna match up the seam to the seam and put a pin there. It can be confusing though to make sure you're getting the, your two bags right side together. Okay, the straps, whether you're using this style or the other style of strap that I mentioned, tuck your straps inside and it's going to get sandwiched in this seam. So now we've got this whole circle here. I'm gonna just go back to the machine and sew around this whole circle at the 15 line or 5 8 line. So it's all sewn around that circle. It fit together nicely. If you do have one that's a little bit bigger than the other, put the bigger one on the outside, right? And then sometimes that'll they'll just fit together nicely that way. But if it's a big difference between the two, then you might need to make a bit of an adjustment. But if you've cut them exactly the same and sewn them the same, they should fit together perfectly. Good. So now I need to find my gap, and then I'm gonna be turning the whole thing through. We will be shoving the lining inside the bag, but I'm gonna do two things first before I do that. One is just run back to the iron, and I can feel right now that it's exactly what I want. I want the seam allowance coming up toward the lining. We're gonna press this seam flat, keeping that seam allowance going up toward the lining. That's gonna make it a lot easier for when we do turn it in. We'll get a nice edge like that. The other thing I'll do before I shove that lining inside is close up my gap. So I'll just pull the ends tight those edges come together and I'll just sew nice and close to the edge of those folds. So there's a little gap sewn closed and I've pressed this flat. The seam allowance going toward the lining. That's called under pressing and it's helpful when you can't get in there and under stitch but it gives you a really nice edge now. When I go to turn the lining inside it's just going to kind of come together naturally at that edge. One other option that you can play with is to just cutting your lining about an inch or so longer on both sides, so two inches total, and then you would wrap it around and you would stitch in the ditch here all the way around. That can look really beautiful. I kind of wish I had done that, it looks really pretty. Anyway, for me, I'm just gonna turn that in. I'm gonna go back to the iron again and press it now with that seam coming right up to the edge like that. I'm gonna press all the way around and then I'm gonna sew all the way around, this time a little bit deeper, probably the 20 or 25 line or inch line. We're looking just beautiful. I absolutely love it. But I noticed that when I pick it up, because I haven't used any interfacing, and I don't mind that. I don't mind the bag being kind of soft, but I don't like this where it's collapsing at the strap. So I think what I might do now is just sew an X shape right in here, right through all of the layers. I really like that X, that came out nice. Just make sure that your lining is sitting flat in there, inside. I did catch a fold on one of them and had to give it another go, but I really love it. So that is it. Once your gap is closed on the inside, you are done. Okay, it's all done. I'm ready to head out for the day with my new tote bag. And you know what, that went together really nicely. It didn't even take very long and it just used up pieces that I had in my stash. I think it's a wonderful project for, for beginners or intermediate sewers. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you're wondering what about some kind of closure on the top, well, in my next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do a couple easy closures, but then also a more advanced one, which is a zipper closure. 
exactly like this one. So that'll be great for the more intermediate and advanced sewers. It's I do it with my students though, and they, they get it. It's actually not that bad. So if you wanna learn how to do a zipper closure, once that video is posted, I'll link it here right at the end. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel grow and I really do appreciate it. So thanks so much for doing that. So until next time on Catherine Sews, you take care.